a job. Right. You go to a football coach. Joe Rouse moved to Wisconsin. Oh, he did? Took a we, football coaching job over there, but now we, I'm like, hmm. We still call him Joseph. Yeah. <laughs> Good guy. He never wanted to finish his degree fully. I, he always used to get in trouble there. Well, go finish it. So, um, Joanne used to be friends with his Gloria, coach. yeah. But I, I don't think they, they haven't, like, kept in touch. Or She's whatever. a very nice person. I, I did yeah. I tell you the story about Mark, the, Mark, Mark, you know, she talks to them for hours. Well, you know, we go out like we used to try to go out every Christmas, yeah, to see each other once a year, or I invite them once. If we didn't do it, we do it in the summer, but not it's been a while since, right? How long have you since, since you know? I haven't seen them, we didn't do it since COVID started, but we did go out really? to the restaurant, yeah. So we used to always go out to see you when he comes in. So, did I tell you the story about? Ten What's years. Like huh? What's up, Matthew? Because well, I said, are you selling your house because it needs to be fixed up? <laughs> tell me I'm going to get to it. I said, go on. Did I tell you the story when my mom was over mm-hmm. and Gloria was going to come over and, and, you know, that that story that Terry Scheibel, remember the, yeah. the, with the feeding tube? Yeah. So, you know, Gloria, she was very, very devout. Yeah. My mom... My mom, on my way between us, before she was over, gets yeah, that so good, Martha. Let her die. Leave her alone, you know. So Joanne told Joanne told my mom because mom, please. She goes when Gloria comes here, she's very very religious. Don't don't just don't say anything. She goes, oh, honey, I'm not get out of tyranny. So. She didn't say a word, Gazina, my mom, the whole time. Then towards the end, we were watching CNN. There was a guy who, some guys went into this house hello, hello, hello. and he murdered I can't get and sexually assaulted yeah. this 10 year old girl. To yeah. work. So <laughs> we're watching this. My mom says, you know what they, they you know. And she said, honey, you know what they should do to this guy? She said, they need to take him and do pieces and dice him with a knife. <laughs> so the door is like, Elias, can you? So, so Steve. Hi, we can see and hear everything. Yeah, we know. I know you can see and hear everything. It's, it's wrong with what we're saying. Uh, oh no no! I just thought maybe like you didn't think we no, could. I'm, no, I, I'm so here. I'm using the computer. I got it hooked up. I bought the. C to USB to get the camera here working, but I can't get it working. Why don't you troubleshoot it over the phone, Steve? Oh, which which camera though? We can we can. Oh, the okay. The camera. I want to use the external camera. Oh, okay, okay. That was plugged in. No, that's different. That's HDMI there. We don't have a plugged into that wall. This this uses a power source from here. Yeah. Okay. It uses the computer's power source. Okay, so it doesn't. Okay. Is it on? Doesn't it? It will. It's on. It's on because of this, right? I don't think there's a. There's no on/off button on this. You used to have a blue light, right? Yeah, the blue light would come. Yeah, there's no blue light. Okay. There's nothing, so it's not. Steve, where are you today again, man? Why are you? Why are you playing hooky? Steve's playing hooky, man. Steve's gotta, playing hooky. Exam, Steve. Now I'm going to give you a three time on harder the computer one. Computer that activates. Oh, yeah, I'm looking, but I can't see anything. Is is there a software on the computer for this? We think then probably. But when I hook this up, this works like with the HDMI. So that screen shows up. So is it um, go, go to settings? Uh, where's settings? Here. And then look for um, maybe there's a devices. Let's see. I see you. I can go to the first row and grab you some. Or cameras. I'm going to add them all to. Parts of. I have a pair of cameras, but I'm not going to use that. So here. How many you guys are gonna read? Are we just doing the test today? No. Story of Joseph. Story of Joseph? Mm-hmm. I watched his movie a couple of days ago. Yeah, wasn't it? How would you cry when he sees his son? Huh? 
Yeah. Oh, good. But I think yeah. they added some stuff to yeah, it, like it. the cups and stuff like that. That's yeah. not in the in the actual. Uh, Oh no no it is they did put stuff in the in the in the bag. Oh, no, but they kept one of his brothers. Well, I think you would hear, like, you know, we should. What did, what was it that wasn't true? Something I read was. Yeah, something was. Yeah, but that was true. Let me make it's it more. Bluetooth uh, on. It's not Bluetooth. It's plugged in direct. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best? My wife said she you need to move weight. Mm -hmm. But yesterday I was saying how when I got a nice picture, ah, you're yeah. losing weight, all right. And then this yeah, is yeah, the white one with that low ice cream. You're on your. Settings for that. See me. That's the Scaldian diocese. This yeah. thing is recording. Are we on that? We're on. We'll just do it the way it is. We'll do it the way it is. All right. Let me get you a bigger view. Okay, I'll tell them Monday we can close, and then uh, there will be a section for now. Okay. All right, perfect. Perfect. Sounds good. Thanks, Betty. Appreciate it. I'm gonna have a pair of glasses here from now on. Huh? Let me see my knee. I'm about to make my exit. Put my mind back. Anything that that for the large company. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God bless you all. Thank you. This is a a short class because the second half of the class, the, those in class are going to take an exam. Um, very easy exam. Those who uh, have already given a couple out in the Zoom and they've been easy. The rest of the people on Zoom. You have to connect with me. Uh, my, you know, call me anytime in my phone or leave me a message or text me. And we can get together. It takes about 10 minutes. Okay. So uh, I see Steve uh, and anybody else uh, on Zoom. Where's Mr. Reggie? Reggie passed his exam today. All right. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we continue. Um, our Easter celebration continue um, Easter. Uh, people don't know that Easter is all the way to Pentecost Sunday, you know, even in the liturgically. Okay. So as we continue to um, get ready for the great feast of Pentecost, we're on our way now from one feast to another. Uh, Pentecost as me and um, my brother Elias were writing together. Uh, we were talking about the church, and I said, "There's a, a great Pentecost taking place in the Chaldean Catholic Church, because we uh, we we have a lot of uh, people in the seminary, a lot of uh, candidates, and we have uh, strong lay effort. We got new priests." I said, "But it's very sad that the Archdiocese of Detroit is not going to ordain a priest this year. So we got to continue to pray for fire throughout the church." All right, and in our prayer today, before we start, a stark warning. We had great news in the pro-life that uh, Roe versus Wade is going to be overturned, and rightly so. It was very unconstitutional from, you know, the, um, not just the political, from the, you know, the Constitution and, and the law behind it. But we don't want to get into that. But I will tell you, this is a fight we must not let our guard down. We must not let the Democratic woke party, I don't care who it is, or Republicans who, who, you know, who, who don't, or members of the clergy, because somehow they always want to sway the vote to the de Democratic candidate saying this, there's other issues. This is the definitive issue now. The courts are going to be on our side, and we got to put our feet down and stand up for the for all the um, young kids on our border that don't have a voice. Uh, it's, it's got a special place in my heart. 
Um, when I heard about it, matter of fact, Elias texted me about it and um, he said, did you hear the good news on the text? And I said, what good news? I don't know, so maybe something in our church or something. And then he gave me that text and uh, very joyful because I told you I was the pro-life monitor at Brother Rice for eight years. I took uh, a number of buses down there and I would like to go next year, not to protest the illegal uh, ruling, but a celebration for God's justice, a celebration trip down there. Because I said one day I will come back celebrating when we overturn this uh, ugly and murderous law. We have to be cautious here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. We gotta put. We gotta. Horrible. Yeah, we gotta put our feet down. We don't know what they're gonna do because of that. Yeah, well, they will. Yeah. Huh? It's already made. This is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Okay. The great story of Joseph in the Old Testament, and it's one of the longer stories. Long. Uh, I mean, continuously long story. Some people will even say it's probably the first novel we have. Let me ask you this. Who is Joseph? And what does the word Joseph mean? We've got to always know. We've got to always go back and find out what the, what the name means, what the character behind the name means. What does everybody know what? Mariosef, Yosef, but it's not Mariosef. This is Qasad Yosef. Going back, I remember as a child, as a little kid growing up in my household, uh, my father in winter days uh, loved to put the uh, before they were uh, eight track tapes and then they became in uh, you know, cassettes and he had the uh, Qasad Yosef and he would listen to it for hours, you know, and I would say, and there was a, a beautiful Chaldean priest uh, chanting it. And I was wondering what he was listening to. But now I know, of course, you know, so somebody tell me what the meaning of Joseph is. Steve, do you know what the meaning of Joseph is? Yeah, I mean, God will give. There will be another. Yeah, God will give another. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you? So, and of course, he gets another brother, Benjamin, right? But what, tell me a little bit about Joseph. Who is he? We have the 12 tribes. Who is he? Because now we have to have the 12 tribes. So, so Joseph was, uh, what I know is, he was sold by his brothers mm -hmm. into slavery. Yeah. Uh, he was uh, just treated inhumanely uh, and, and let go as a brother. And he ended up finding favor with Pharaoh. Yeah. And he became Pharaoh's everything. Yeah. And Pharaoh entrusted everything that he had to him. Mm -hmm. And at the uh, after a period of time, there was a great famine. Yeah. And, and uh, people traveled to Egypt where Joseph was, including his brothers. And uh, they asked him for help. And he was the keeper of Pharaoh's all the grain and all the bread and all of that. And, and Joseph knew it was them. They didn't realize it was him. But he helped his brothers, the ones who sold them into slavery. Yeah. So he gave us, he gave them bread. But what's ironic about Joseph is our St. Joseph, Jesus's foster father, same thing. He, he saved the Messiah he saved the bread of life and and you know so we'll give us the real bread that came down from heaven down. that's very nice uh, a lot of good synopsis we'll get into a big synopsis in a minute okay what i wanted to hear from you guys is joseph is one of the 12 tribes yeah. one of the 12 tribes of patriarchs now becoming the nation of israel okay and remember joe remember jacob had two wives okay you know, you remember he was, you know, a trickery or a deception into marrying Leah. You guys told me she had a lazy eye, you remember? <laughs> so everybody learns from everybody. I must have read that one time. All right. <laughs> and from Leah, Leah was fruitful. 
we get five children. Okay, six children, excuse me, six children, okay? We have Reuben, who's the first. Simeon is the second. The third being Levi. And the fourth being the most important of all of them is Judah. And then we have Zebulai and Ishikar. Those are the six. It's important that we could name them. Those are the six from Leah. Now, Rachel had a problem, like Sarah, all right? She was not getting pregnant. She had a hard time getting pregnant. And she makes the same mistake again. We know we have all these repetitive sins or things that they weren't sinful then because they didn't know, they didn't have full account of them. That she hands her handmaid, you know, her... Uh, you know, her slave girl, Bilhian, to Jacob so that he can have children and it would kind of like, be like kind of from her. And the children that came from Bilhan is Dan and Naphtali. Okay, so now we have eight tribes. Well, Leah got a hold of this and said, hey, 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 this is not right. Just because, you know, her wound is closed, I can't have any of this. You should have been reading this in the Genesis. And so she says, hey, it's my turn now since uh, my wound, you know, I'm not having any more kids. Let me give you my handmaid, Zilpha. She wants to get in the action too. And from Zilpha, Leah's maid, and she gets Gad and Asher. Well, now we have 10 tribes, okay? We need now two more. Well, God hears Rachel's cry and she makes her fertile. And in Jacob's late age, he has two children, Joseph, and it, and it is, one of his most beloved and favorite children. We'll get into that right now. And then while they were traveling by Rama, okay, which is very close to Bethlehem, and then on the outskirts or in Bethlehem, she has Benjamin. And then what happens when she has Benjamin? What happens when she has Benjamin? Yeah, she dies. She dies giving birth. So we here are the 12 tribes. Reuben, the firstborn, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Zebulun, Issachar, Dad, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Joseph, and Benjamin. Those are the 12 tribes of Israel. Nothing can be added. Nothing can be subtracted. I was looking at the salvation history. Yeah. And it was from one of the chapters. Close the door. They're walking back and forth. It's okay. Go on. Um, but they added, or they they mentioned the two children of uh, Joseph. Joseph. Yeah, they get of nicknames of kind of, of of the Israel kingdom, but they're they're more of the nation of They're not the tribes. They, you know, we 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 see that uh, that uh, Aphram is, is you know is one of the you know is how is divided the Davidic kingdom, but it's not a tribe. But, uh, is is that right? Sorry, EJ, is that right? Is it is, was there a tribe that was actually called Joseph, or I thought the tribes were called Manasseh and Ephraim? Well, these are the 12 tribes that come from they could have been taken over from his part, but the 12 tribes are these. Okay. From Joseph's, they come to he gets blessings for them. Again, the second child gets blessed before the first child. You remember when he correct does that and Joseph gets mad, said, This is my first child. He said, The woman must side, get, I know what I'm doing, you know. But the 12 tribes are these. But Joseph will give his share to his two kids. All right. So he splits the one to two. Yeah. But, but the, when you talk about the 12 tribes, these are the 12 tribes. And we know in Jesus' time, how many tribes were there left? How many tribes were there left when Jesus' time? 
Just Judah. Just Judah. Just Judah. We know the other ones went in the, in the, they never came back from the Assyrian. They're mixed in with the Sumerians. So there's 10 in the north and two in the south. Yeah. You might have, you can consider some of the Benjamins, you know, but we, we only consider because it, it became now Hudai, it took the name of Judah. Yehuda. Okay. Okay. Now, Jesus is from the tribe of Judah. He's not from the tribe of Joseph or Benjamin. I told you guys, he's from the fruit of Leah. Joseph is from the fruit of Rachel. And he was a favorite child of Jacob. Israel loved Joseph. His, he was a sparkle in his eye. Okay, I'm a father of uh, three boys and a daughter. I love my daughter. But some people say that I favor the little one. I kiss him right away when I come home, you know, even though he, he's a little akia. Yeah. You know, sometimes, he, you know, he, he thinks he can fight everybody in the house. My wife says, when you see, uh, when I see Maximus, my little one, I got a sparkle in my eye. Well, I'm a human being. I have faults. I love them all the same. Believe me. Zach makes me laugh the most. John Paul gives me the biggest heartaches, but I love him the, so much. I love Genevieve. Joseph has a favorite, and he doesn't shy away from it. He spoils him. He was a favorite child. Israel loved Joseph best of all his sons, the Bible says. Sacred scripture says, for he was a child of his old age, and he made him a long tunic. This is Genesis, this is Genesis 3, 37, verse 3. He says that Israel loved Joseph best of all his sons, for he was a child of his old age, and he made him a long tunic. We know favoritism is not a good thing. What happens when you favor somebody over another? Well, that'd be going out, right? Jealousy. Let me tell you guys. Let me let, let's now I'm a I'm from a family of seven, and I'm the sixth child. There ain't no favoritism there. No way. I'm the forgotten child. I'm not the baby. I'm not the oldest. The last child is favored, the baby. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the sixth child. The middle is the worst part. So I don't know about this favoritism business. <laughs> It's not always a good thing, especially in a family. There was a little, it caused a little bit of jealousy. It caused a little bit of hardship. Who does this guy think? And not only that, Joseph would kind of, you know, how, how do you want to say, you know, would kind of uh, pinch his brothers into a, you know, kind of more of a, a strange relationship. He'd kind of nudge them the wrong way. He tells him about these dreams. Joseph did have dreams. Does anybody recall? You guys are supposed to read the scripture. Does anybody recall any of the dreams? Steve, give me a dream of Joseph with his brothers. I'll give you a hint. It starts with stars. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the dreams that I recall, he said, is that they're, um, he dreamt that they're, they're going to bow down to him or he's going to be greater than them. Which yeah, his, the wrong his star way. was brighter, and all the others, right. all the other stars bowed down to him exactly. Right. Now, could you imagine that? You know, if you were in a family of twelve, and and the, uh, your little brat brother told you that. Okay. Well, anyway. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so that's oh, what happened. but it happens. It happens. Okay. Yeah. And not only that, it says in scripture that Jacob made him a. Beautiful tunic, and that's why the color code that's what it's called the plays, right? Yeah, yeah, technical color of code, or you know, tunics or stuff. You know, he made him a beautiful tunic. Favoritism, favoritism is not always good, and nudging your brothers and telling there could have been another way that he could have brought up these dreams. Seems that God tells us sacred scripture Jacob had a small problem with favoritism. 
Let's not fool ourselves. This could cause problems in any family relationship. Causes jealousy, envy. And Joseph, now here's the story. Jacob tells him, your brothers have been away hurting the sheep, hurting my flock. <clears throat> Go see, you know, if they need anything, they need any food, any water. Are you going to help them come back in? So he sends them out. And from afar, okay, Joseph's brothers, Reuben, you know, Simeon, Levi, you know, Gad, Asher, Ishakar, I, Judah, all with them, you know, except not Benjamin. Yeah, they go out and they see, oh, look who's coming here. Ha <laughs> ha, look at his, look at his little tunic that Baba made for him. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we would like to smack him now. And he's all giddy. Hey, bros, dad sent me out here. Do you guys need anything? Yeah, we need something. Come on over here. Boom. <laughs> well, evil always shows its ugly face. Even to the point now that, that you know, again, we're going to go back and revisit almost, you know, Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. The brothers want to kill him. Let's get rid of this guy. We don't need him. And then Reuben, who had, you know, slept with his Jacob's uh, cockabine. We don't know. Um, we know that he wanted to kind of justify himself. So, you know, you, you know, they come in and say, you know, let's not kill him. Let's put him in the system, you know, and let's sell him. And Reuben had in mind that he would come at night and rescue him and take him to the father and make himself kind of uh, at peace with his dad. There was kind of some shift there in their relationship. And then they got these caravan of Egyptians coming, selling balm and stuff like that. And they come up with, you know what, let's not have murder on our, on our hands, but let's sell them to, the, to him. And then let's take his beautiful, you know, um, woven tunic. Remember, remember, Jesus has a tunic that they're going to shoot dice for. And they kill an animal and, and, and put the blood on it. And then there's no forensic uh, back then or DNA research there, Pete. So they take it to Jacob, and Jacob is distraught. They said that, you know, your son Joseph was killed by a wild animal. We tried to fend him off, but we couldn't then. So they took the tunic? And, they, and again, remember when, remember I told you there's going to be deception in, in uh, that's going to face uh, Joseph again? This was the second deception, you know, that's going to happen to Jacob. Not only that, he was deceived by his wives. You know, this is another major one that he's, you know, deception takes place. He was you know. deceived by his father. Yeah. He was also, yeah. Yeah. And now, you know, now deception. Yeah. What goes around comes around. Huh? <laughs> I like to say, well, you know, you know, what you sow, you know, you yeah. reap what you sow. Yeah. Okay. Let's cut corners. Joseph goes to Egypt. All right. And God is with Joseph. Those dreams were there. He was Joseph is special. Joseph is a prefigurement of Christ. More than anybody so far. Even more than Jacob. He's a prefigurement. More than he's going to be a spot on prefigurement of, of Christ. Let's watch how the story. <clears throat> we know that Joseph goes and gets hired by for one of the people uh, delegates, you know, to the Pharaoh, the high, you know, uh, you know, uh, person in Pharaoh's company. And we know that Potiphar has a wife who wants to seduce Joseph. And Joseph is a very, very moral person. And he doesn't give in. Doesn't give in. Prefigurement. Christ never sinned. He was tempted, never sinned. Very moral person in Joseph. I prayed about this, this uh, the other night when I was preparing of the morality. It's not mentioned in a lot of biblical commentaries, but very moral. Doesn't give in. Could have been easily gave in and had a, had a relationship with Pedophil because it seemed like Potiphar was not around much. 
And then she schemes that, that Joseph tried to uh, seduce her or take her into the bed and he's put in jail. But even in jail, the jailers knew he was a really good guy. And he was, and matter of fact, they gave him the jobs of running the whole jail. God never left Joseph. And when he was in jail and doing all these things, they, you know, they had nothing to worry about. He had it pretty easy there, it seems like. And he was still interpreting dreams because, you know, we remember the cup bearer and the head baker came to him and they were thrown in jail. And the cup bearer tells him his dream. And in three days, Joseph says, you're going to be put back in your position. And the baker says there was a bird coming and pecking all the, all the, the bread out of my bread basket, he, and, and he said, in three days, your head's going to be asked of you. You know, you're going to die. He was warning. Joseph, okay. Joseph. Joseph interpreted these dreams for them in jail. And, oh. they, came, and they came out oh. perfectly. <clears throat> All right. So years go by. Pharaoh has a bad dream. Okay. We know that he sees seven beautiful cows in one of the dreams, and then seven of the most ugliest cows Egypt's ever seen, and he knows the smaller cows swallow up the bigger cows. And then he sees seven beautiful ears of grain, very healthy, and he sees seven strawny uh, ears of grain, and the strawny ones swallow up the good grain. And he calls all his cohorts and all his uh, men and his fake priests and you know and and soothsayers or whatever have you to interpret his dream and nothing comes about nobody can interpret his dreams but then there's a person he says you know when i was in charge of the jails there was a person that was a really honorable person he's not one of us he was a Hebrew, but he was an honorable man. He probably was unjustly accused. Anyways, the story comes that Joseph interpreted and he says to him, I know your dream. You're going to have, dear Pharaoh, you're going to have seven bountiful years, you know, and you need to save up for seven years of drought. You're going to have to save up the grain. You're going to have seven plentiful years, seven joyful years. And Pharaoh's heart is moved. He knows this is the only person to ever interpret his dream. And he takes off his ring that he runs all of Egypt, that he was a, a god of Egypt, of course, a false god. And he puts it on Joseph's finger. And he says, you are now in charge of Egypt. I'm only in charge ahead of you by my status. Whatever you say will be done. You're in charge of everything. Pray for the men of Christ. Everything is put under his feet. Come sit in my right hand. Come sit in my right hand. Everything is put under his feet. And Joseph acts justly. Joseph is not a cruel leader. He's one of a philosopher kings. When uh, we know that the best leadership could be a, would be a philosopher king who would lead. A justful person is the best way you can run a kingdom. Not a democracy. Sorry, it's a philosopher king. A, a justly person. A person who has God in his heart. And he does a marvelous job. He's storing up all this, you know, grain. And, you know, he, he's preparing for the seven lean years. The seven lean years come in and it's hit that side of the world and it's turned it upside down. Everything is droughted. Earth is not yielding fruit. The earth is not yielding fruit. And it hits in the land of Shechem where 
Jacob and his 11 brothers are, and 11 sons are. And one of them comes up with an idea and says, Jacob, to their father, Jacob, let us go to Egypt and you know, let's take them. You know, I know they take some pistachio. Let's see if we can trade. We can buy some grain lest we die. And we know the story. He really doesn't want to send them. He's scared for them, but it's the only means. And he goes there and they go in front of Joseph and they ask for some grain. And Joseph recognizes that these are his brothers. They didn't know. No. He's dressed like a, you know, like a pharaoh. Yeah. He's the king. Pharaoh's not doing anything right now. Pharaoh's on vacation. Plus, <laughs> plus, they had, plus they had their heads down because they are not supposed to look at him. Yeah. I'm sure they got a side view. They, they didn't recognize. He had makeup on. You know, uh, you know, they, they, you know they, they had, he was adorned. I mean, this is not the, plus, this is not a 17-year-old person anymore. This is, you know, a matured human being now. You know what I mean, Joseph? Steve, we change. I don't look like I, you know, I looked when I was 17. I was pretty in shape. Yeah. I, could, I, I could jump down there and do 150 back then. I'm lucky if I do, you know, 30 push-ups now against the wall. <laughs> I'm sorry, Steve. I'm just telling the truth, right? Yeah, no, it's, of course it's true. Yeah. So they don't recognize it. And then he tells them, you know, I, I don't trust you guys. He plays the hard Hard person. I don't trust nothing that none of this bull, you know, you know, how are you guys? He says, well, we're, we're uh, 11 sons. One of our, you know, one of our, you know, brothers has disappeared, you know, and, and, and um, my father, he says, uh, and I, we have a younger son that's still back home. And Joseph says, uh, bring him back to me. And they beg him and they said, no, Joseph, you know, my, our dad already lost one son, you know, and he's not going to depart from him. You know, he stays at his side, you know. He says, nope, I'll fill up your uh, things and I will, you know, send you back. And then he puts a couple of things in their bags to entrap them kind of so they can hold, you know, um, excuse me, they go and get Benjamin. And you know, um, is it right, Steve? Um, I read it, I read it the other day. I should know. It's the second time that he puts the gold in the or the cups in, into the bag, or the first time? No, the first time the yeah. he puts all the silver. Yeah, it's their their silver cups. He puts it back because yeah. they brought it to him in exchange to buy food. Yeah, and then he puts it all back into their sacks. Yeah. Uh huh. And the second time is when he tricks them. I mean, he puts something in there, right? Yeah, the second time he takes yeah. his cup and puts it in Benjamin's bag. Exactly. And then he, they came and they said to him, we brought back the original ones and we brought back some new silver too. Yeah, I know that. I just wanted to, it was the second one that... Since Benjamin was with them the second time. Yeah, they had to bring him back. Yep, and he put it in his, the, his cup, he put it into Benjamin's bag. Yeah. And to make a long story short, he brings him back. And he tells them that you guys are, are traitors and he gives them the third degree. But all in all, you know, he really wants to break out crying for his brothers. There's a Hanunutha there. There's a love there that's, you know, unbelievable. Yeah. And he finally tells them, listen, how is your father? I am Joseph, your brother. And they're scared of death. They think that he's going to take retaliation. He said, no, no, no. This is, God did good out of this. Remember, what's my favorite quote? Evil never has the last word. God used this evil act to save that whole region from famine. And it's going to be, he's going to bring the 12 tribes into Egypt and take them out as a nation. They're going to grow. Their tribes coming into Egypt, they leave as a nation right. or preparing to become a nation when they go in the land of Cana. So very, very big. Years, right? huh? About 300 years. Where they yeah. So, you know, the way they were having children. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> we know we'll get that in Book of Exodus. Yeah, they were outgrowing. So, EJ, this, yes, this Pharaoh, the Pharaoh that gave Joseph all authority, he was the Pharaoh before the Pharaoh that. Oh yeah, three hundred like three hundred years. Right but it was yeah. a different Pharaoh. Exactly, and we have kind of a little bit of evidence of that, because they said that you know that they were lenient toward foreigners then. Okay, which would it became even in a little bit of historical things. Well, Joseph reveals, listen to me, look at me. It's me. I am Joseph. You, you know, EJ, my favorite part of that story uh -huh. was after he revealed himself and they were so apologetic to him. He says to them, it's not your fault. God wanted me here to save Israel. So it's, you know, most of us, we would be so upset that our, our, uh, Brothers tried to kill us, and they saved, saved us. We will hold that grudge forever. I mean, we hold a grudge if if our brother doesn't want to work the weekend shift for us. You know, we held a grudge for ten years, and this guy they wanted to hope kill him. Hold, sold him I to hope you didn't hold a grudge. Oh no, not me. I'm just saying I don't have any brothers, but but we hold grudges for so long for the stupidest things. We had Joseph. They were going to kill him, sold him to slaves, and he tells them, "Don't worry, it's not your fault. God wanted me to here to to do this." You know, you're so right. When we get old, um, I was a partner with my older brother there, a couple years older than me. And some of the arguments now that you think about them were the, some of the silliest things. And we used to really get mad. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're right. The devil really can get into, you know, into us for no reason, you know, when we let him, when we let, let our guard down. Many biblical scholars believe that the story of Joseph is one of the first novels. It's a long story. And in that long story, it foreshadows Jesus. Okay. The church is Joseph being a type of Christ. Okay. Father theory says that not only, you know, in, in, in Joseph saving and uh, allowing the people to eat bread, like we, we were talking in the beginning of class, you know, Jesus was going to rain down, you know, the Eucharist and heavenly bread. And of course, we're going to have the manna to sustain people, sustain people in uh, coming up next next uh, story in Exodus. All right. Um, many of the church fathers, and I'm going to call somebody up to read, really point to this story to be a foreshadowing of Jesus. Who wants to come up and read? And it's from one of the church fathers. Okay. Christ is a true Joseph. Read it's pretty long reading. Read it all the way. From here to here? No, from here to here. Oh. Christ is the true Joseph. Sirius of Arles, upon seeing Joseph, his brother discussed his death. Just as when the Jews saw the true Joseph, Christ the Lord, they all resolved with one plan to crucify him. His brothers robbed Joseph of his outside coat that was of, of diverse colors. The Jews stripped Christ of his bodily tunic at his death on the cross. When Joseph was deprived of his tunic, he was thrown into a cistern that is into a pit. After Christ was despoiled of human flesh, he descended into hell. Afterward, Joseph is lifted up out of the cistern and sold to the Ishmaelites, that is, to the Gentiles. When Christ returns from hell, he is bought by all nations at the price of faith. Upon the advice of Judah, Joseph is sold for 30 pieces of silver. Christ is sold for the same amount upon the council of Judas Iscariot. Now in different translations, Joseph is not written as sold at the same price. For some say it was 20 pieces of silver and others 30. This spiritually signifies that Christ was not not to be believed and loved equally by all people. In fact, 
even in the church. Some love him more, others less. For Christ means more to the soul that loves him with greater charity. Joseph went down to Egypt. Christ went into the world. Joseph saves Egypt from want of grain. Christ frees the world from a famine of the word of God. Yeah, I read a bunch of them. A lot of them echoed the same thing, and I, but I loved this one. And I, I thought it was uh, a beautiful put together. I was going to talk about the silver that Judas Iscariot, you know, um, traded Jesus in for. And Joseph was traded for, for silver. Dr. Scott Hahn tells us the following. Joseph foreshadows the suffering and the salvation won for us by Jesus. He is the victim of jealousy and rejection by his brothers, the children of Israel, and is sold for 20 pieces of silver, slavery into Egypt. Still, he forgives his brothers and saves them from the death of famine. Jesus is the royal son of David, the Lion of Judah. Okay, there's a lot of foreshadowing of Jesus and Lion Joseph. Of Lion of Judah. He is the lion. Judah is going to... Is gonna, is from yeah, Not that's what... Oh, okay. No. He's the royal son of David, the lion of Judah. Jesus is the lion of Judah. Now the book of Genesis ends with a set of promises and commands. In Jacob's blessing of his children was Genesis 47, 29, 30. What is the command that Jacob demands of, his, of Joseph? What is the command? You guys should have read that my bones, you must take my bones back and bury them with my father. And Joseph demands that his bones be brought back too. Okay, don't leave him in this foreign land. And then the promise. What's the promise? What's the blessing? Let's go there, please. Genesis 49, 9 through 12. We got to know this. Boom, we got to snap our fingers and know the blessing to Judah. The scepter is never going to leave your hand. Who's ever there can still read it. Are you there, Elias? The scepter shall not, from nine, Judah is a lion's wealth. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He stooped down, he crouched as a lion, and as a lioness who dares rouse them up. The scepter shall never depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he comes to whom it belongs, and to him shall be the obedience of his people. Binding his fowl to the vine, and his ass's colt to the choice vine, he washes his garments in wine, and his vestures in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. The scepter will never leave. Judah. Book of Revelation, Jesus holds the scepter. He's the king of kings. He's the promised king of the Davidic kingdom. So this is the promise of the Savior? Yeah. Yes. Most I definitely. I didn't realize it was here. I thought yeah. it was from Isaiah. Oh, there is a lot of that in Isaiah. Yeah. I'm surprised that Judah was in the <clears throat> It's not, I told you, it's, it's not Joseph or Benjamin. And he loved it, and he loved Rachel, but I, I told you guys last week, it's from the line of Leah that we, we get, you know, I'm the line of David. I'm shocked that, that that was the case. Mm -hmm. And what Joseph did for, I mean, actually saved Israel. You know how amazing our God is. We have two cockabines in the, in the genealogy of Jesus. He doesn't far away from people who repent, you know. And in the end, we have a, uh, you know, from the beautiful, uh, why don't we wait till we get to it, the story of Ruth, who is a foreigner that comes in into Judaism, you know, when Boaz marries her. All right. So um, Israel has wandered as a tribe into Egypt. And will leave as a nation heading to occupy in the land of Cana as God's people 
as the chosen people of the promise to herald in the Messiah. Jesus, as we know also in Matthew's gospel, Jesus, as a young child, has to go to Egypt, and God will call his son out of Egypt. I have called my son from Egypt. I've been wondering if, uh, what was the benefit of this? Like, why would God, uh, you know, have him go all the way to Egypt and bring him back from Egypt and have the famine? I mean, salvation. They grow. They grow. They were just tribes. Over there, they had they wealth. We, we know the story as, as they were bricklayers and, and strife came upon them. There was probably a period when Joseph reigned that they became very wealthy and prospered and well, had the best of everything. The puppeteer, they had free will. They made their choices. Well, I'm saying you still got them to the promised land, but they made choices that got them to where they are. Well, no, I mean, he's talking about why, why why couldn't they just grow they just, grow as a nation in in Cana uh, why, yeah, or right. anywhere else or ever? But that's but the mean, famine. It, the famine. The famine itself is not their choice. Yeah. Right. The famine is not their choice. No. So, but, but God, so God but God them uses them as a tribe, as a tribe, to become a powerful, you know, a nation now. And how many times you're going to see back in the book of Exodus that we're going to take next week, you know, and, and continue for a few weeks. How many times is that they see the power of God? No big deal. We want to go back. Oh, let us go. We're going to see that. Let's go back to Egypt. The greens were so good. You didn't even have straw at the end to make brick. But, but this is the big but. In the time of Joseph, the tribes of Israel, the tribes of Jacob, were wealthy. We, we're, we're only getting the picture at the end when they, it's time for them to leave that things have turned. They're becoming too wealthy, too powerful. They're spreading too much. We need to enslave them. Well, they, they, they have so, a, uh, so God used them to grow there. That's one of the a reasons. Lot of in Egypt, a lot of people gave them gold. And exactly. They, Especially when they were leaving, right? Yeah, they were leaving. Yeah. And then... Well, that's, you answered the same question. You answer the question because they became a strong nation. <clears throat> something that turned very ugly, they wanted to kill their brother, turned out to be something marvelous, that he becomes the prince of Egypt. I guess for growing up and... Um, becoming a... Yeah. They're not going to be able to, to conquer the land of Cana as a small tribal unit anymore. No. Because remember the wars with Shalomar and Abraham, these were all tribal wars. Right. Now these nations have grown now. You know, the Amorites, the Canaanites, you know, you know, all these people have become, you know, strong. So they have to become strong. <clears throat> yeah. We're not going to live in paradise. Okay, any questions about the great story of Joseph? Do we see the prefigurement of Christ all over the story of Joseph? You know, uh, Steve, one of my favorite parts of the story is when he sees his father, Jacob, and Jacob sees his son that he thought who had passed away and they embrace and they kiss. That's, that's my favorite part of the story. When I read it and I've seen it in the movies, isn't that a wonderful part? Oh yeah, of yeah. course. Isn't that a little foreshadowing how the Lord is going to kiss us if, we're, if we keep up his commandments in heaven? Yeah. You know, let me tell you guys something. All you guys over there in Zoom and in my... You know that beautiful picture of divine mercy? By the way, St. Thomas did a wonderful job decorating the church for divine. I didn't, I didn't see it until the week after. I didn't. Um, that portrait says something that's startling. Jesus is not standing flat-footed. Believe me. Jesus is not standing flat. One foot is ahead of the other. That he's running toward us to give us his mercy. Our wonderful God, our wonderful Savior, is running toward us to offer that mercy. He's not like this. He's got a foot forward coming toward us. And I hope you guys look at that when you go home today and ponder how much that means. That he's running toward us to offer that mercy. Any questions about the story of Joseph?
Gabriel, any questions? Yohanna, you did a great job on exam yesterday. Any questions? I gotta give Mike an exam. No questions, thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, I'm gonna sign off here because I have to give these uh, fellas an exam here real quick, all right? We'll see you next week. You gotta read all the way, um, at least until chapter 15 in Exodus, okay? Because we're gonna be flying through it. Because we're gonna have about eight more classes till we get to um, June, the end of June. We'll cut off, we'll come back in the middle of August. I'll take you guys all the way till about the week before Thanksgiving and we'll end it, okay? All right, sounds good, thanks. I do have to warn you guys, um, my brother is uh, fighting cancer. Um, it's, uh, it's stage four, it's, um, you know, it's, it's God's will. But if something should happen, I will tape a class, okay? And put it on, okay? I know we're having a little technical issues because uh, the tech technician from the, the bishop's office took another job and I know they're, we're getting there on time, but um, I don't know, we'll, we'll clear that up. I make sure about that, okay? God bless you. God bless your families. Let's end with prayer. Ronnie hasn't been here in a while, so he can come lead us in prayer. And everybody at Zoom got to get a hold of me to take this exam. And, you know, it's not going to be hard. Take the exam, get credit for it. You know, it's uh, be on your way to becoming a subdeacon or a lector. Part of the church is great. All right, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Uh, thank you, Lord, for this blessed day, for this wonderful opportunity to be here. We truly are blessed not only to be living in this country, but to have free will. We pray, Lord, that you help truly overturn uh, this this case, the Roe versus Wade, and we truly pray that not only is there peace, but that uh, you give the judges the strength that they need to truly. Uh, not give in to any type of fear. We also pray for uh, all the conflicts throughout the world, uh, the people in Iraq and everywhere else. Pray for all the people with cancer, all those uh, who feel alone or in fear of the virus. Uh, with having said that, we offer this day and all the other days throughout our life, Lord, to you that we may come closer to you. And with having said that, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our, our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now, my dear God, Lord, death. Amen. Thanks, EJ. You're welcome. God bless you. EJ. Thanks, man. Thank you. Yes? Yes? Somebody wanted me? EJ, what's the name of your brother? Salem. Salem. What is the name of your brother, EJ? Salem. Salem? Yeah. Okay. And Thomas prayed on him. Uh, Salem? Before okay, time. Just to pray for him. Yeah, Salem. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. And, uh, should to take that exam, should we go to uh, Chaldean Diocese and take it? No, just call me up. I'll give you a, about a 20 minute exam orally, all right? Oh, okay. Okay, okay. very easy, all right? Okay, thank you. You want to mention?